accelerates at a continued rate and it goes unchecked and it'll just rip. And I'm terrified by it. In the year 2023, a chilling prophecy is on the brink of becoming an unpleasant reality. As Earth's fragile ecosystems teeter on the edge, the looming disaster threatens to eclipse every natural catastrophe in history. But what if I told you that in the hallowed halls of NASA, brilliant minds are frantically decoding a sequence of events that could spell the end of life as we know it? From unprecedented data to satellite imagery, the collective genius of scientists is converging to paint a picture of the impending doom. What astronomical event could trigger such chaos, and is humanity truly powerless in the face of these celestial forces? Join us as we unravel the chilling details and the ominous warning from NASA that the world's worst disaster in 300 years is about to happen. Within Earth, few places rival Yellowstone Park's history and beauty. Explorers are captivated by its canyons and geysers, but concealed beneath this wonderland lies something unsettling. However, NASA has just unveiled secret info that Yellowstone Park is mysteriously closed. A hidden anomaly stirs, unnoticed yet dangerous, concealed underfoot. Meanwhile, beneath Yellowstone's serene facade lies the Yellowstone supervolcano, a geological marvel. This colossal active volcanic system's history spans eons, molding today's landscape through eruptions and shifts. But don't assume supervolcanoes arise haphazardly. Their genesis is intricate. According to NASA, the Yellowstone supervolcano's tail stretches across two million years, marked by volcanic cycles that shaped the park's grandeur. Roughly 640,000 years ago, a transformative eruption rocked the region. The volcano's subterranean magma reservoir collapsed, birthing a colossal depression, the Yellowstone caldera. Spanning 30 by 45 miles, it dwarfs ordinary calderas, illustrating its magnitude. At its zenith, this volcano's power is awe-inspiring. Though the caldera filled over time, it might persist. Meanwhile, beneath a captivating geological feature thrives, the mantle plume, a molten rock column or magma. Rich in heat energy, it fuels Yellowstone's geothermal marvels. Iconic geysers like Old Faithful amaze with their steamy eruptions, caused by trapped superheated water exploding upward. But there's more. Yellowstone boasts colorful hot springs, formed by heated groundwater. Amidst the rocks, waters, canyons, and forests, this park is a diverse marvel. Notably, Steamboat Geyser steals the spotlight. Once erratic, according to NASA, it's undergoing intriguing changes. Previously, it erupted unpredictably, pausing for days or even half a century. For ages, Steamboat Geyser lay dormant, like a slumbering giant. Then, a remarkable shift occurred in March 2018. The geyser's behavior transformed dramatically, with eruptions becoming frequent, sometimes weekly. Scientists, intrigued by this change, now monitor closely, wary of potential connections between increased activity and a more intense, unexpected eruption. The unthinkable, once considered impossible, now lurks on the horizon. A significant 2014 earthquake in Yellowstone, registering 4.8 on the Richter scale, further fueled concerns. While the quake caused minimal damage, scientists hesitate to label it a coincidence. In the real world, coincidences are scarce. Even graver is the past's lessons, where seemingly minor events evolved into catastrophic outcomes when ignored. There's also the La Garita Caldera in Colorado. This dormant volcano's history offers a cautionary tale. Born from tectonic collisions, underground magma pressure built, causing explosive eruptions that formed colossal calderas, resembling bulging bubbles that eventually burst. After the eruption, a huge circular hole remained. Over 15 such calderas dot the region, hidden by time and newer eruptions. But the grandest is the La Garita Caldera. Around 2.1 million years ago, it unleashed an unprecedented eruption that left a catastrophic imprint. This event's magnitude, measured by the Volcanic Explosivity Index, VEI, hit an astonishing VEI-8, ranking among history's most violent volcanic episodes. The VEI rates eruption explosivity, with each step up representing tenfold intensity. Some suggest adding a ninth level to account for even mightier eruptions. Presently, the highest VEI level is 8, but La Garita's eruption might be rated 9.2 if the scale is extended. This eruption ejected a staggering 1,200 cubic miles of material, twice any known eruption volume in history. 
Around 80,000 years ago, our early ancestors displayed wanderlust. Earth's glaciation lowered sea levels, unveiling land bridges and paths. Seizing this chance, humans migrated to previously unreachable lands. Roughly 74,000 years ago, they reached the Indonesian Peninsula, and about 65,000 years ago, they touched Australia. Journeying through diverse lands, early Homo sapiens confronted weather, animals, and food scarcity. Yet, they couldn't prepare for the havoc of a supervolcano. These rare giants unleash colossal eruptions spewing immense ash. Around 74,000 years ago, the Toba Caldera in Sumatra erupted, belching out around 500 cubic miles of volcanic material, potentially even more equivalent to burying the entire USA under half a meter of ash. The ash cloud blanketed 40 million square kilometers, stretching from India to China, creating a volcanic umbrella. Aerosols, like sulfuric acid and chlorine, reached as far as Greenland and Antarctica, triggering a volcanic winter. Scientists estimate temperatures dropped by up to 37.4 degrees Fahrenheit globally, even plunging over 50 degrees in some regions. This catastrophe severely impacted the environment, causing widespread deforestation in India and Southeast Asia. The Toba eruption coincided with early human migration out of Africa. Routes through India and Southeast Asia, where Toba erupted, have yielded evidence of human presence. Stone tools buried beneath Toba's ash indicate human existence around 74,000 years ago. Yet, whether they endured this cataclysmic eruption remains a mystery. The aftermath of Toba's eruption caused a human migration bottleneck, nearly extinguishing our species. Survivors eventually migrated worldwide, even reaching Northern Europe and North America through the Bering Land Bridge. Humanity's existence hung by a thread. A few individuals saved our lineage from extinction. Despite Toba's colossal impact, another formidable player emerges, New Zealand's Taupo Volcano. Around 26,500 years ago, it unleashed an intense eruption, propelling 750 cubic miles of ash and pumice into the sky. This remodeled the landscape, leaving a 360-foot deep caldera now filled by Lake Taupo. Active since, Taupo last erupted 1,800 years ago, altering surroundings significantly. Recent signs of volcanic unrest, including earthquakes and ground shifts, complicate Taupo's study. A 2019 study revealed an inflating magma reservoir 3.1 miles below the surface, hinting at potential smaller eruptions, possibly even a massive one in the future. Other places echo similar tales of unrest, like Italy's Campi Flegre, a lesser known but remarkable volcanic complex in Naples. Nestled within are 24 craters, including submerged ones in Puzzuoli Bay. The sprawling caldera spans eight miles, evidence of its ancient vitality. Though the last major eruption was in 1538, Campi Flegre's volcanic activity spans 60,000 years. Uncommonly, its caldera formed through two explosive eruptions. Current research hints at early signs of future activity, with scientists intensely studying the magmatic system for early warnings. Unlike its counterparts, Campi Flegre's risk stands out, prompting Italy's national emergency plan, covering 500,000 people in the red zone. This caution arises due to the unprecedented danger posed by this unique volcano. Studies indicate a potential tsunami hazard in case of underwater eruptions, with towering waves as high as 100 feet threatening the populated coastal zones of Pozzuoli and Sorrento. In moments, bustling areas could vanish, helpless against the fury. Meanwhile, across the world, another storm bruised the Long Valley Caldera, born from an immense eruption 760,000 years ago. This explosion unleashed a staggering 150 cubic miles of searing ash, ranking as one of the past two million years most remarkable volcanic events. The caldera stretches around 17 by 32 kilometers, encircled by mountains, its wonders showcased in the hot springs, fumaroles, and geysers dotting the landscape. While this window hints at its latent power, the United States Geological Survey classifies the Long Valley Caldera as high risk, unique for its location amid a densely populated region in California. Unlike its counterparts, the caldera boasts distinct behavior. Scientists envisage four eruption scenarios, each tied to varying volcanic activity levels and hazards. First, a small eruption could occur, releasing lava and ash, bringing modest risks to the vicinity. 
While not as cataclysmic as larger events, it still poses dangers to nearby communities. Visualize lava as molten rock flowing from the volcano's heart. In this scenario, it might stream down the slopes, creating gradual lava flows. The extent of these flows depends on the lava volume and the terrain. While moving slowly, these flows can threaten nearby areas and structures in their path. Simultaneously, volcanic ash billows into the sky, carried by winds to wider areas. Ashfall can be disruptive for communities, causing respiratory issues, coating roads, rooftops and fields, and disrupting life and livelihoods. While a small eruption may not trigger global effects, it can disrupt local life. Communities must brace for ashfall and lava flow threats. Evacuation plans must be in place, alongside monitoring systems and communication to keep residents informed and safe. Though the impact of a small eruption is limited compared to larger ones, it underscores the importance of continuous monitoring for active volcanic systems like the Long Valley Caldera. In a moderate eruption, activity intensifies. More lava and ash are released, impacting a larger area including communities, agriculture, and transport networks. Lava flows during a moderate eruption can extend further and move faster, amplifying the challenges faced by those in its path. With increased lava volume, more extensive and faster moving lava flows become likely, possibly reaching populated areas on the volcano's sides. The ashfall worsens, impacting communities at a distance. Roads and transport become perilous, roofs may buckle under ash's weight, and agriculture faces damage, jeopardizing livelihoods. Yet, eruptions aren't limited to lava and magma surges. Sometimes, volcanoes wield a different weapon, pyroclastic flows. These rapid scorching clouds composed of gas, volcanic ash, and rock fragments race down slopes at incredible speeds. Without magma, the volcano violently releases pressurized gases, ash, and debris, thrusting them skyward. A dense, speedy pyroclastic flow forms, hurtling downhill at hundreds of kilometers per hour, extending kilometers from the vent. The pyroclastic flow's heat and force obliterate everything, landscape, structures, vegetation, erasing all in its path. This perilous flow presents an extreme threat to life and property, its immense energy incinerating all it touches. The pyroclastic flow's scorching heat inflicts severe burns and can lead to fatal injuries. Inhaling the hot gases and ash causes suffocation, leaving no haven in its path. The flow's incredible speed and power make outrunning it nearly impossible, complicating evacuations and leaving communities defenseless. However, the impact doesn't remain confined. Pyroclastic flows affect regions well beyond the volcano's vicinity, ensnaring even those who manage to escape immediate danger. Yet an even graver threat lurks lahars, volcanic mud flows. These arise when ash, rocks, and debris mix with water from rain or melting snow and ice on the volcano's slopes. During the eruption, the volcano ejects hot materials onto its sides, interacting with rainwater or melted snow, forming a slushy mud and debris mix. This creates fast, destructive lahars that surge down slopes. Their unique trait is their ability to travel great distances from the eruption site, setting them apart from typical volcanic events. These hazards don't stop at the volcano's doorstep. They can surge through valleys, extending far beyond the volcano itself. Communities downstream also face peril, as the force and volume of lahars could ravage structures, bridges, roads, and landscapes along their path. Even farmlands might vanish under layers of mud and debris, instantly affecting food production. Given these historical catastrophes, you might wonder about the implications today. Imagining it is indeed chilling. An eruption from Yellowstone's supervolcano would be an unparalleled cataclysm of colossal proportions. Unlike modern eruptions, the eruption's magnitude would dwarf all others. Its eruption column could stretch kilometers high, surpassing typical volcanic altitudes. This eruption scale is so vast that even history's mightiest volcanic events appear small in comparison. This eruption would unleash a colossal ash cloud spreading over vast areas within hours. It would release an astonishing volume of volcanic material with estimates ranging from hundreds to thousands of cubic kilometers. To grasp this enormity, consider that Mount Pinatubo's powerful 1991 eruption one of the 20th century's most intense, released about 10 cubic kilometers of material. Now imagine the terror if according to NASA's ominous warning, in this year 2023, the monstrous Yellowstone supervolcano erupted. The very idea sends shivers down our spines. 
This explosion would dwarf regular eruptions we've seen, turning them into mere fireworks. The Yellowstone supervolcano's eruption would be orders of magnitude greater, accentuating its potential for global impact, an unparalleled global spectacle of chaos and devastation. The crux here is that a potent eruption's repercussions would resonate worldwide. The immense volume of volcanic particles and ash would scatter and absorb sunlight, triggering a substantial dip in global temperatures, an event known as a volcanic winter. This cooling could persist for years as ash particles hover in the upper atmosphere, reflecting sunlight into space. The Earth's surface would receive less sunlight, upending normal heating patterns. It would be the greatest disaster. Ecosystems and agriculture would suffer due to reduced sunlight for photosynthesis, the process plants used to convert sunlight into energy. This disruption would hamper plant growth, including vital crops. Agriculture would face yield reductions and even crop failures worldwide. Such failures could lead to famine and food scarcity, affecting millions and causing malnutrition. The food chain would unravel, impacting both plants and animals. Moreover, the lengthy cooling would alter weather patterns, reshaping atmospheric circulation and precipitation. This would worsen agricultural and ecosystem woes, giving rise to prolonged and severe droughts and winters. This cooling's effects wouldn't stay confined to the eruption site. It would span the globe, affecting areas far from Yellowstone. Such widespread consequences would challenge societies and ecosystems on a global scale, highlighting the intricate web connecting our world's ecosystems and the daunting potential of nature's fury. Volcanic winters aren't new, but a Yellowstone supervolcano's cooling effect would surpass recent history. Now, with an unprecedented global population, even a 50% loss could still mean nearly 4 billion lives at risk. Supervolcanoes reshape more than magma and heat. Ash falls alter Earth's terrain. During a Yellowstone eruption, the immense energy and volcanic material could trigger unexpected events, like tsunamis in nearby lakes. The eruption's seismic activity and rapid displacement of volcanic material might cause underwater landslides, especially in the surrounding lakes. These slides would displace water, creating powerful waves that spread from their source. As these waves reach shallower waters, they grow into potentially massive tsunamis. Communities near affected lakes would feel the brunt. Sudden surges could inundate low-lying areas, causing wide destruction. Powerful waves could sweep away structures and pose severe threats to lives and safety. The tsunami's extent hinges on landslide size, intensity, and specific lake shapes. Nestled amidst Yellowstone's vast expanse, though sparsely populated, lies a web of communities and leisure spots huddled around its serene lakes. However, lurking beneath this picturesque surface is an unsettling truth. Even tourists, captivated by the beauty, stand at risk. The twist? They can't be warned as locals can. Yellowstone Park sees a continuous influx of visitors, a transient parade of thousands daily, oblivious to the hidden peril beneath their feet. It's a double jeopardy. Underwater landslides give birth to tsunamis distinct from their oceanic cousins triggered by earthquakes. These silent behemoths have a knack for local-scale havoc, adding a unique layer of complexity to evacuation and emergency efforts. Despite earnest attempts to ensure the safety of the masses, uncertainties remain. In such a scenario, the instinct might whisper, take the first flight out, but alas, air travel is among the first casualties. The colossal ash cloud, erupting into the heavens, darkens the horizon for aviation. Volcanic ash, a menacing mixture of rock and glass fragments, proves a formidable adversary for aircraft engines and their critical components. Upon contact, this infernal mix can meld into a glassy substance within engines, obstructing fuel flow and airways. As if that's not enough, these abrasive particles can wear down engine innards, inviting inefficiency and possible failure. Yet the menace doesn't stop at engines. It takes the audacity to stain airframes, cloud windows, and taint sensors, adding insult to injury. Amidst the volcanic turmoil, aviation guardians step into action, guarding passengers and crew. Swift and decisive, aviation authorities move to lock down airspace in the ashes' grim embrace. Airports fall silent, flights grounded, and runways deserted. It's not just the outbound jets. Inbound ones are caught in the web, too. The supervolcano's temper can stir unexpectedly, brewing for ages and then roaring to life with a ferocity of a hundred storms. Inbound flights, innocently cruising towards the unknown danger, might unwittingly be flying straight into the heart of the beast. 
Rerouting is the radio's song for those far enough from the eruption. But as the very ground quivers and collapses, who's to guarantee that the tendrils of communication won't snap too? If the radio's voice falters, flights could blindly venture into the inferno, meeting their fiery doom. It's not a simple dilemma. The superheated ash cloud composed of fine charged particles turns the conductor of chaos. It orchestrates havoc with power lines and electrical gear. Once settled on these vital networks, it fashions wicked pathways for electricity, sparking short circuits. The result? Equipment devastation, crippling power, and plunging areas into darkness. Amid the chaos, a silent enemy infiltrates the veins of power, and its name is Ash. This seemingly innocuous substance holds the power to cripple an entire electrical ecosystem. As Ash drapes itself over power lines like a suffocating shroud, it bears a double threat. Not only does it create a hurdle for electricity's flow, but it adds its weight to the lines, urging them to sag and falter, or worse, snap like fragile twigs. But Ash's assault is far more insidious. Transformers, those guardians of voltage conversion, find themselves at the mercy of this gritty adversary. The ash breaches its defenses, insinuating itself into cooling systems and insulation materials. The result? A perilous dance with overheating, teetering on the brink of failure. As transformers falter, the electric grid's heart stutters and fails. A web of darkness envelops homes, businesses, hospitals. Entire cities blink out of existence in the absence of power. A frantic struggle begins to restore life to the grid. Utility crews enter the fray, tackling the insidious ash. With delicate precision, they work to cleanse power lines, transformers, and substations. Each layer of ash unraveled, each assessment a heartbeat of progress. But in the aftermath of a supervolcano's eruption, a veil of chaos stretches long. The very equipment that breathes life into the grid might be silenced forever, replaced by the heavy footfalls of an unforgiving natural force. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.